going to partake and model this class and after it, okay? One of you in this room is Governor George Yardley, okay? You don't know it yet, but one of you is Governor Yardley. You were appointed by King James, okay? And you are our first governor. This whole room represents the first Amer American Legislative Assembly of Virginia, and the date of our meeting is July 30th, 1619. So that's today's date right now, okay? This is the building in which we are in. It's called the House of Burgesses. Anybody been to Williamsburg? This is, this is the picture from there. If you don't visit today, you can go ahead and visit it, okay? So just to recap, what the Burgess, a Burgess is an elected representative, is only a white male who owns a specific amount of land. You're only those people that you are allowed to vote at that time, okay? Remember, it's 1619. The king still has the final say. However, as a legislative body, we still have a lot of power, okay? So don't answer this right now, but be thinking about this throughout the entire process today. Is this really a true democracy? Now we say that the House of Burgesses is plants the seed for democracy, but here's some context. The first Burgesses were elected by all free men in the country. So the people that were excluded include women, indentured servants, enslaved peoples, and Native Americans. So they couldn't vote. And then later that changes only people who owned at least 50 acres, and that's not people, but men who owned 50 acres could vote. So be thinking, is this a true democracy, knowing who's excluded from voting, okay? Now let's take a look at those colored X's and find out what your job or your role is. So, red Burgesses, okay? You are, I'm sorry, red X's, you are Burgesses, you are representatives. Go ahead, raise your hand if you are a red X, that means you are a Burgess, that means you've been elected to this role. All right, raise your hand if you are a black X. Thank you, you are an elected Burgess, but your job is a little bit important because you have to hold people accountable for their time when they're speaking, okay? Blue, who's a blue X? All right, it should be this, these people all around here, these individuals. For the purpose of this simulation, we're gonna be historically accurate. You are representing white gentry class. So that means you are English, you do not physically work, you do not do labor, and you have lots of money and you own land, okay? Purple, who's a purple person? Okay, that means you are a governor's council. You have been appointed from the governor to serve the crown and the crown's best interest, okay? Orange, who's orange? We have Governor Yardley right here, okay? So he is picked, handpicked by James the First. All right, and then green, you are non-landowner. So that's everybody on the outside of the room, okay? Now, it would be inappropriate for me to assign you a role in this category, okay? However, I need you to understand who represents this category. So for right now, we're just calling you non-landowners, but know who makes that group up. Historically, this included individuals like indentured servants, enslaved peoples, Native Americans, women, children, and skilled laborers. So these are be poor men, people who work for a living, okay? Again, it would be inappropriate for me to assign you one of those roles. I would never do that. But please know that that group of people is underserved, and they don't have a voice in this process, okay? Question. So the indentured servants, when they owned land after they were done, did they move up a class? They could if they owned enough land. And the that's part of the reason, I'm glad you asked that, that's part of the reason that they instituted the 50 acre rule because indentured servants would only get a handful of acres. They wouldn't get 50. So this was a way of making sure that the classes still were separated between the wealthy and the poor. Excellent question, Andrew, okay? All right, so here's the rules of our simulation today, okay? Only the Burgesses, the governor, and the governor's council can speak. So the people in the center of the room, basically. Only those people can speak. Those that do speak are only allowed to speak for 30 seconds at a time. That's your job to make sure that they're on track, okay? And only one person can speak at a time. This is important. You need to speak loudly and enunciate because the people who are observers need to hear what's going on. 
and so does our camera, okay? And then also, landowners, you can participate in the simulation, but you don't have an actual voice in the process. You can only pass your thoughts. So on a piece of paper, you're gonna jot down what you think and then pass it to the people in the center. And unfortunately, our non-landowners, you are silent observers, okay? You're gonna hope and pray that your <coughs> needs are met by the people who are, are voting for you, okay? All right, so this is silly, but this is what we're gonna do for our simulation. <coughs> if everyone in the class could get one superpower, what should it be? So collectively, we're gonna have a meeting on this. You all are gonna have your own thoughts and you're gonna discuss it. Landowners, you can write your thoughts down on a piece of paper. People who are non-landowners, I still want you to write your thoughts down, but please know that you're not gonna be able to share that with anybody, okay? Your voice will not be heard, but I want you to write it down because tomorrow we're gonna to decide, did they actually speak for you, okay? Literally and figuratively, okay? So everybody in the class gets one superpower, what should it be? The people in the center, your job is to really try to like talk up what you think and convince one another because we're gonna have an official vote in a little bit. Okay, everybody take a couple seconds, think about that, jot your thoughts down, and then we'll have our governor who actually calls the meeting to order. Alright, so everybody, jot down your thoughts. What should our superpower be? Write it down. Just put it somewhere that you can see it. Yeah. Okay, somewhere. Did you want to re maybe ask a question and then direct the conversation a little bit, Governor? If everyone in the class could get one superpower, what should it be? idea because then like you don't have to have roads and stuff you can just fly to wherever you want and you don't have to have horses wait are we like yeah, doing it? Okay. Yes. I know it silly, but yes. yeah then you don't have to have horses or walk you can just fly and then um i don't know it would probably take energy because you probably have to eat a lot i don't know you can go anywhere yeah. at any time yep. and very fast yep Well, 
superpower is why. It's called a superpower. Well, you there. said they have so, to kill people. Yeah, but when they're done, they just land back down. Yeah, they know just, when they have to conserve energy and go get water. Yeah. So we got like this. You have this like meter on your arm, and it tells you how much battery life you have left in your but flying that's, mode. That's not, that's not a meter in your arm. No, it's You're just flying. it's just developed. What's that word? It's like um. I'm the only one that's going to be doing it. If he's sticking to his 30-second allotment of time, it sounds like he's kind of monopolizing the conversation right now. Well, nobody's telling me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just assuming I'm taking the lead role of this conversation. I said you can become a plane, too. Is that from uh, you? No. You can't speak. Because you said he wants to shape you. Oh, good idea, Brad. And then you can turn into a bird. Because then the natives that are hostile don't know your spying on them. What happens and then when everybody gets eaten because they're a bird? You shape shift back to a human or something, something that can get away. I'm not a bird. And who's going to eat a bird? Yeah, anyway. You just see a pigeon flying at the top of the Oh, yeah, I'm guessing she just yeah. stopped. She said that thing.